you know what time it is. Football season, Q4. Time to close out another year of growth and prep for the next year of revenue. To bring in more businesses Q4 and beyond, you need HubSpot Sales Hub. With a smart prospecting workspace, deal management suite, and AI-powered apps, you can take total control of your operation to generate more leads and land more sales. And when you pair a sales hub with other hubs in HubSpot Smart CRM, your team will be on the same page across the entire customer journey. Leads won't slip through the cracks, and data is connected across marketing, sales, and operations, so you can better measure your impact on the bottom line. Stop sticking to the same old strategies and start closing more deals, because the best time to score is Q4. Make the switch to HubSpot Sales Hub at HubSpot.com slash sales. What's up, everyone? It's Friday, February 24th. I'm Zachary Crockett here with Mark Dent, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're talking about eBay. The website's been around for nearly 30 years. It was the darling of the 1990s internet. And in the past few years, it's really made a push to be relevant again. For a while, that renaissance was working, but now the company has hit some choppy waters. Mark's gonna fill us in on what's going on. But before that, let's take a look at what else is going on in the world of business and tech. NPR is gonna cut 10% of its workforce amid a slump in ad revenue. CEO John Lansing said that NPR was already bracing for a $20 million revenue fall off in 2023, but now that figure is expected to be closer to $30 million. The staff cuts, he said, were a last resort. The UK is experiencing a fruit and vegetable shortage due to weather and transportation issues. Residents have been encouraged to switch over to seasonal eating, and uh, right now it's turnip season, so some hard times for the Brits. <laughs> Speaking of that neck of the woods, the European Commission is banning TikTok from its employees' corporate devices. Some 125 million people in the EU use TikTok every month. That announcement follows similar initiatives in the US, and it's part of an ongoing effort to crack down on what officials consider to be foreign security concerns. Target is spending $100 million on six new sorting centers to expand its next-day delivery service. It expects to deliver about 50 million packages from sorting centers this year. That's up 2x from 2022. And $100 million might be chump change to this next person. After choosing a $723 million one-time payout, the main winner of a $1.35 billion Mega Millions jackpot is going to take home about $498 million after federal and state taxes. That's enough to buy like 30 Target sorting centers. And lastly, sales of non-alcoholic beverages in the U.S. hit $395 million in 2022, according to Nielsen. That's a 20% increase year over year. All right, Mark, we're talking eBay today. eBay was my, my favorite website when I was 12. I would go on there like every weekend to lust over baseball cards. And I think it was my first exposure to a national online marketplace. Yeah. This company was really the pinnacle of the 90s internet boom, right? Yeah, it it was my first online purchase as well, I believe. Although CD Now at roughly the same Uh time might have actually been the first. But yeah, um, basketball card back in like uh, the year 2000 for me. And yeah, it was like Amazon was selling books at the time. CD Now before Amazon bought it was selling CDs Mm -hmm. and eBay had everything. So they were in, in some ways ahead of the curve. And the interesting thing is that, yes, that was 20 plus years ago and eBay is hardly at the front of most people's minds. And yet it's surprisingly powerful and vastly bigger than it was Hmm. uh, back in what many would consider its heyday. Yeah, I mean, you could still go on there today and it's really kind of a niche paradise for collectors. You can search for like a troll doll from the 1970s and you'll just find like thousands of dolls for sale in this very niche category across many, many different categories. Right. And as of a couple of years ago, this is a stat from 2020, there was one and a half billion listings on eBay. Wow. And so when we think of like the peak popularity, if you will, of eBay, or at least when it was, you know, in the zeitgeist more, there was only 3.7 million listings. So there are 300x as many these days, (laughs) even though the company is, you know, not doing that great. Although for a while, Mm -hmm. it seemed like it was having a little bit of a resurrection. So, you know, let's go back real quick to sort of the early pandemic, pre-pandemic period. As you said, eBay wasn't 
quite its old self from the 90s. It was kind of struggling a little bit. It was facing some pressure from activist investors, and it was thinking about selling off all their assets. What happened in early 2020 that sort of led to the company turning around? Well, they did sell off a lot of those assets, including StubHub, the uh, ticket resale website, Hmm. and they sold that for something like $4 billion. And so that kind of made them more of a slimmed down company to where they could focus. And that is like something that Wall Street tends to love. They love focus. And what eBay did was they also hired a new CEO Mm -hmm. who was a former executive at Walmart. That helps. Which is obviously one of the biggest competitors of eBay. So that kind of gave them somewhat of a new life right there. But then they started making some fairly strategic moves that were kind of replicating what their upstart competitors like StockX and The Real Real, which are niche resale Mm -hmm. websites, had been doing. StockX, of course, is sort of a sneaker resale platform, right? Yeah, yeah, they're sneakers. The Real Real is kind of like luxury clothing, Mm -hmm. name, big brand type of clothing. And those websites authenticate everything. It's not perfect, but when you were buying like a pair of Jordans, you knew that they were going to be legit. And Mm. and eBay had always had problems with that going back to the 90s when Beanie Babies accounted for uh, a huge portion of sales on eBay. And a lot of times they weren't legit. So eBay started to authenticate sneakers, watches, handbags and trading cards. You know, those blew up in popularity during the pandemic. So Mm -hmm. you saw all these people who were online and eBay was now a little bit more trustworthy And these kind of niche communities that you were talking about were all seeing a resurgence at the same time. So it led Mm -hmm. to a lot more people using eBay. Uh, The company saw its active buyers increase from around 174 million in uh, Q1 2020 to 187 million a year later in 2021. Mm -hmm. Its uh, gross merchandise sales went from around 18 billion to 24 billion. Wow. And that number basically encompasses everything that was for sale on the website. And eBay Mm. makes its money largely by taking a cut of that. Mm. So it was kind of a boom for eBay. Sure. Okay. So the big question at the time was, was this just a pandemic boom? Because a lot of companies saw a boost in profits, a boost in sales during 2020, 2021. So I think it was sort of a question on people's mind, is this just an illusion? What have we seen in more recent times as the pandemic is sort of fading back into the background of of American discourse. Yeah, well, we've seen people, you know, log off, Mm. essentially. And that has been bad for uh, numerous companies from Zoom to Netflix to Amazon, the biggest competitor of eBay. And so, of course, it's also been bad for eBay. They've seen their user base just shrink Mm. at a more rapid rate than it grew. So like I was saying, they had around 187 million active buyers in early 2021, Mm -hmm. Well, that number started to fall pretty much immediately in the second quarter of 2021, like when people started to get vaccines Mm -hmm, and -hmm. and venture back out into the world. And now that number was down to 134 million. Yikes. Okay. Yeah. At the end of last year. So that's that's quite the tumble. Its stock rose up to around 81 in 2021. Now that stock has fallen to 45. Wow. Okay. They had to lay off 500 people recently. It's just been really bad. And, you know, Amazon has had layoffs as well. So it's not unusual for a company in this space. But I think that eBay is suffering worse and has kind of predicted that things are going to be worse for them in large part just because they're not Amazon. They're not Walmart or Target. You know, those companies are still at the front of people's Mm -hmm, minds. mm And eBay just isn't for whatever reason, even though they still do a lot of sales. It's, it's kind of weird, I think. <laughs> yeah. Are they banking on a new generation of consumers? Because obviously the 90s are, are back in fashion with Gen Z now. Yeah. eBay is sort of this 90s relic of tech. And in a weird way, it's sort of come back into the spotlight. I wonder if a part of eBay's new strategy here is to sort of go after this younger demographic. I think that's part of it because they have been using, you know, influencers on TikTok, you know, like everybody does to Mm -hmm. try and communicate with a younger audience. And I think what at least the story that they're trying to show and, you know, they just released these pretty negative results that we've been discussing just earlier this week. But they've tried to kind of spin it by highlighting that we are going to be like the big company for sustainability. Oh, interesting. And ESG and all those buzzwords, which do appeal, of course, to a younger audience as well. And that's because eBay, unlike Amazon, unlike Target, unlike Walmart, 
the primary merchandise that they are selling is resale. Hmm. And it's something that is essentially a hand-me-down or, or whatever it might be, whether it's clothing, whether it's a handbag, et cetera. And so they're touting that as like being, you know, a little bit better for the environment and, and things of that nature. Interesting. So they're trying to say that we are the number one player in the re-commerce space. Okay. And so that might appeal to this younger generation. Interesting. Sort of the antidote to the fast fashion and the Sheehan's of the world that are rising up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Instead of just the stuff that lasts for six months, you're going to buy something that somebody's already worn for six years and it will hopefully last for another six years. Right, right. That's an interesting play for sure. The other interesting thing I found about this is just sort of how much they banked on this authentication model for their new business model. It seems like almost an insurmountable challenge. I mean, you see the same thing with like fake reviews on the internet, just sort of lending credibility and authenticity to this vast digital space on the internet that seems impossible to rein in. I was digging into sneaker culture a little bit this week and just saw a lot of sort of sneakerhead people in the shoe community complaining about eBay's authentication model. And I guess there were these videos that had come out showing employees in the factories sort of validating some of this stuff. And they, they spend like literally like 20 seconds looking at the box or the shoe and making a decision if it's legitimate or not. And just, they sort of have to, right? Because the sheer volume of stuff that's passing through their hands, they can't put it under a magnifying glass each time and give it, you know, 30 minutes of examination on each item. But I do wonder, you know, how stringent those authentication processes are yeah, and what it's really doing to minimize fears about buying fake goods online. As I said earlier, there are one and a half billion listings or yeah. whatever on the website. Yeah. And, and granted, not all of those are authenticated because they're not expensive enough that they'd have to go through that process. But, you know, some of those other, like the Real Real and StockX, I mean, they have to do those same things. Mm -hmm. And I know customers have not always been happy there. So I almost feel like if one of them, if eBay somehow becomes like really, really good at authentication, it would certainly give it this tremendous advantage. Right. The question is like, how do you do that? It is just something that seems unscalable. Yeah. I mean, even StockX was sued by Nike because Nike went on the platform and found a bunch of inauthentic shoes being resold, branded as original Nikes. I'll say this. The last thing I bought on eBay was a Calvin Klein windbreaker. <laughs> and uh, that baby's authentic as far as I know. <laughs> All right. Duly noted. Well, if Mark Dent can find an authentic Calvin Klein windbreaker, there's got to be some more of them out there. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig and our executive producer is Darren Clark. If you want to find more tech and business coverage, go check out our newsletter at thehustle.co slash email. And we will catch you next week. Hey, I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Purry. My First Million features famous guests like Alice Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern, went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire, thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts.